All right, guys, and while I'm editing this video, we just hit 50,000 subscribers on this channel. So there it is right there, Blazer Builds, 50,000. So thanks to everyone that has subscribed and stuck around and actually still watches the videos. I know I don't really spam like subscribing and sharing and all that stuff, but if you guys feel like doing that, now would be a good time. And if you don't, that's fine too. So I've been uploading on this channel for like 13 years now. I think there's 1,200 videos. Uh, I've done a lot of different stuff over the years on this channel. So even if I stop working on cars, I'll probably be doing something. Like I was on YouTube before there was even money involved. Before people monetized YouTube, I was on YouTube still uploading so so i'll probably be around for a while whether you guys like it or not so if you love it stick around if you think i'm annoying as hell send it to your worst enemy and let's get this truck done okay so i'm getting some stuff mocked up here and then i'll finish in the driver's side wastegate i'll do have the bottom side of this one mark so i'm going to take this apart and i'll do that side and i'll show you what i'm doing there essentially just taking these little bends that i cut out of the piping that i used for here and i'm just kind of angling it at a 45 and then i'll shoot the wastegate down that way I did get this 45 millimeter hole saw for cutting the hole for the wastegate and it actually worked out really nice cutting through the stainless. Just this guy here, I think it was like 35 bucks. Stainless can be a little bit tricky to drill holes into because if it gets too hot it'll actually harden the material more, like it's called work hardening. And if it gets too hot too fast it'll harden and basically it's like impossible to drill through then. Or it gets really hard and starts to wreck the bits so that thing worked really good. I did use some solar flux on the inside of this just because I didn't have enough tin foil for the gas. A lot of you guys have been asking about what this can is. A can of solar flux is behind the lathe. Some of you guys saw it on a couple of the other videos. It's basically just a flux you can put on the inside of the joint instead of back purging. It's a powder inside the can but you use uh, alcohol and then mix it into a paste and then rub it on the inside of there. And then it'll prevent the sugaring on the inside of it without having to use gas. So go ahead and rip this side off, we'll drill a hole and weld it up. get the camera out of the way so I could finish that cut but here now it's all the way through turns out okay okay here we go there's one and there's two they just kind of come down at this angle and I'm not sure exactly what I'll do with the dump tube but I should just be able to dump it kind of like right here inside the frame rail or just on the outside of the frame rail or if I really wanted to I could go up this way or down by the bumper I kind of feel like just dumping it down right by the frame rail though. So we'll see about that. The beauty of it is I don't have to figure that out right now. So I can take my wastegates note off of here. That one's done. And now I think the rest of the night what I'm going to do is probably take the intercooler radiator back out. I'm going to weld the 16A and fitting onto here and I'll probably finish the upper radiator hose. That way that's done and out of the way. Okay, so I have the water neck pulled out. I just used a pipe wrench, heated it up, and then pulled the thing out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this fitting on the lathe. You can see that the little step on the AN fitting is actually smaller than the neck, the water neck. So that actually kind of moves around in here. So this little lip there doesn't really need to be there. It's just kind of blocking space. So I'm going to take this little lip off, and then I'll actually try to taper it in a little bit wider than the opening now just so the infeed of the hole is a little bit bigger. So we'll do that. Okay, so this thing actually turned out pretty good. I took uh, that little lip off that I was talking about and then I measured 
this section here and I turned that down to where it would fit nicely inside here so it doesn't really have much side to side play and then I also tapered in the inside instead of the water hitting a, a wall there it'll yeah it's just tapered in a little bit so it should flow a little bit better and now I can go ahead and weld it in there Okay, so I just took uh, the outside of this V-band on the grinder. These are really weird V-bands, which is uh, my mistake. I didn't, I was being cheap and I didn't buy the VS V-band for it. I just got these on Amazon or something like that. And look how big this flange is. This is a two and a quarter V-band, but look how big the flange is compared to like this size flange. So what was happening is that that flange was so big, I couldn't fit a two and a quarter V-band on it, so I had to put a two and a half inch V-band on it, and then it would be tight around that V-band, but the turbo V-band was actually loose. So even though I had the V-band completely tight, like all the way butted up against itself, I could still swivel the turbo around. So I just kind of used the bench grinder and took that thing down. Now it actually fits. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this one. I'm going to run to the store and get a gasket for the water pump, and then I'll make this top line. Yeah, just for reference, look how much bigger that flange is. So the tube is actually the same size, but the flange is a lot bigger. And I did verify the inner diameter is two and a quarter, so I think it's just that flange that's too big. Yeah, there, there's the flange compared to a, the flange from a three inch. This is a three inch for my downpipes. Look at the size of that bad boy there. Alright, so I got that thing shaved down. That fits nice. I also went ahead and finished this upper radiator hose. So that's kind of what it looks like. But I'm not really happy with it. So that kind of sucks because I need to cut it shorter. And these fittings are like really hard to reuse if you got to cut the stuff out and get the hose out of it. But I don't really like all the extra slack here. I did push this fitting over a little bit. But this loop is kind of almost enough that it's like starting to kind of kink the holes a little bit. But I did kind of take a second look at this thing. So I take this fitting off. And then I run it like this. It will actually fit nicer. The, the curve is a little bit better. Stick out that I have from the fitting being a 90 degree is uh, pretty decent. And I should be able to get it down to where it's kind of just flush with the top of the radiator. So that's kind of what I want to do with it. So I'll try my second attempt. I'm going to have to actually cut the holes like back to here. So I'm probably going to end up cutting about two, two and a half inches out of it. Uh, so we'll come back and see what that looks like. All right, so I have my new spot marked with masking tape. I always use masking tape because the electrical tape and stuff is, is really sticky and it likes to pull the fibers out. Bandsaw works pretty good. You can use a grinder, but it likes to make a lot of dust. Bandsaw is a little bit easier to clean, but this is a coolant hose, so it's not as critical as like a fuel line or something. So these are the Shipbox Supply fittings, and I'm using the Shipbox Supply AN clamp. I never used the AN clamp before. Usually I just use the vise and then wrap it in a towel. Um, I did this one. You can still see some marking from uh, where it was clamped, but these fittings are really big and they need a lot of torque to actually tighten. So this is the wrench I was using to tighten them. So a lot of that could have just been from twisting and how hard it is to turn these. So I'll get this thing in the clamp, I'll get the rest of the fitting out, and then I'll try to get this little section off the hose. Alright, that came out okay. I don't think it messed up the threads or anything. But you can see the ridges on the inside of there, so the hose gets pressed into the ridges inside the fitting, so it's it's really locked in there, hard to get out now. I was able to get it just pulling on it and kind of twisting it, yanking on it, so it came out actually easier than I thought, so that's good. Okay, so here's the fitting, and there's just some ridges inside there. The fittings come in a couple different ways. This just has the two ridges. Some of them are actually threaded where I think it's like a left-hand thread and you get it started and then you can thread it back on. 
I tend to like the ones that have the ridges in there. I feel like they're easier to get on than the threaded ones, but that's just my personal opinion. All right, so I'm just going to double check the threads on this thing, make sure the threads are not galled up or weird. I did put a little dab of transmission fluid around there. That's kind of why it looks all lubricated. I usually like to lubricate these somehow, the threads and the inside of the hose. Helps it go together a little bit easier. So what I'll do is I'll take the end that I cut with the masking tape on it and then I'll put the fitting over it. I usually do leave the little strip of tape over it. Uh, just kind of helps keep it from fraying and pushing some of the threads back. That's also why I like to use the masking tape because if I have to pull this tape off of there, it's easier to get off. So just as an example, if I... See how it's kind of like pulling the threads up? I guess that wasn't a very good example. <laughs> but usually the masking tape comes off a little bit easier and, and doesn't fray these things as bad. But that's why I like to leave the tape on, I'll say. Because then now if I take the tape off and then I try to put this fitting over the top of it, I'm having to try to tuck all of this material back in there. So that's why I just usually cut it with a small strip or even like half the width of the tape and then put this over the top and then it goes on a lot better. All right, so I got the fitting on the hose now. You can see there's a little bit of a gap between the hose and the threads. I'm gonna leave that gap in there. You can push it all the way against the threads, but uh, sometimes it's really hard to get this fitting started. So I'm gonna leave it off a little bit. It is quite a ways past the ridge. It's probably uh, more than an eighth of an inch, almost a quarter inch past the ridge on the inside of it, so I know it'll catch. And then the tapered edge on here is actually catching the hose before the threads even catch. So I know before the threads even catch on the fitting that it's already pushing the hose into those ridges so it'll catch. But yeah, sometimes if the hose is all the way in, it can be really, really difficult to push this thing in far enough to get the threads to catch. And then you're fighting with potentially cross-threading these things. So that's kind of my opinion on it, and that's how I usually do them with the clamp. I'm actually gonna go back a little bit farther than flush so it's not sticking out past the clamp. I wanna do that because if the if the wrench does come around, I want it to hit the vise, I don't want it to hit the, the fitting. Here's a different example just from a 10 and fitting. See how this, this section of the fitting is all notched out? That's from the wrench hitting it, like coming around with the wrench on this section and the wrench is too far down and it hits this part and notches it out so that's what I'm going to make sure it's a little bit recessed compared to where the block is. So if the wrench does come around and hit, it hits the block and not the fitting. I'm just going to take some transmission fluid or assembly lube or whatever and I'm just going to be careful to make sure that I'm actually putting these threads in straight. See, that one didn't even catch yet. So I'm trying to push it in. They're not caught. So that can be the challenge with the, the hose too far out, is you really gotta push hard to try to get that thing in there to catch the threads. And sometimes you can barely catch the thread on there and strip out the first couple couple threads so just trying to avoid doing that. I'm going to use my uh, gigantic I'm a farmer with a tractor wrench. All right flip the, flip the fitting to the other side so I can kind of turn it this way with the way I got the thing clamped onto the bench. I don't have to worry about flipping the vise off onto my face. All right, I'm just gonna leave it just like that. So we'll, we'll test fit this thing, I hope. I hope I didn't, uh, I cut two inches, about two inches off of it, two and a half inches. So now it'll probably be three inches too short. 
So, let's see how this fits now. Oh yeah, liking it so far. Liking it. Ho 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 ho! Perfect, perfect. I am thrilled about that. I like that a lot better. All right, check that out. It comes up around the intake tube. It's pretty much flush with the top of the radiator. A little bit higher, not too bad. And then it does take this transition pretty well. I wanted to get like a 120 fitting, as the 120 comes a little bit out and back. Uh, but this actually turned out pretty decent. So a 90 comes straight back, straight down. Looks pretty good. Yes, I definitely like that a lot better than it was. I left the water pump off. I went to go get a gasket for it at O'Reilly's because I'm like, yep, I'm just going to go buy one and nobody can get one until like Tuesday or Wednesday. It's Saturday now, so I'm going to leave this thing off just on the floor in my way so I don't forget about it. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and get the turbos and stuff back on. I should be able to get those on for the final time. I'm waiting to put the intake on until I get my oil pressure sensor and my fittings for, for that so I can do all the stuff back there and then put the intake on. And then after that, I'll probably start working on a fuel system and getting that stuff all done. I do have to change this. I decided I'm going to change this little loop. I don't really like that loop there. I am going to go straight in down here. Um, I, I'm kind of worried about that. I mentioned it when I did it that I wasn't really sure if I liked that. It's the highest point in the system. It's higher than the reservoir even, so just kind of not really a good design. I am also going to flip my line lock around backwards. Um, I forgot when you put them on the back, you got to plumb them backwards. I plumbed it the right way. So like on the Mustang, I had it on the rear lines, but I had it plumbed backwards and I forgot I did that. That should be pretty easy. I got some fittings for these. I'm just going to swap this around. And then I got a rat's nest in there just waiting for me. But that's all wiring and electrical, so I, I kind of like doing that stuff, so I'm not really worried about that. For some people, that's like the really intimidating part that they don't really enjoy doing, and that's actually something that I do uh, like to do, wiring and all that good stuff. So I don't get to take anything off the list today, but I do have weld and finish radiator hoses uh, partially done. So I just got to finish the, the lower hose once I get my 20 AN fittings. Uh, all the ones with the stars on them are stuff that I needed to buy stuff for. So, uh, buy injectors, that one's done. I have the Snake Eater Performance 1400s. The new Genuine Bosch 1400s that they have. They're like the German injectors. So I got the buy injectors section done. Got to install them. I do have to buy some steering column stuff yet. I have the stuff for the power steering lines. Not a lot of this stuff is just all fuel systems, so I should be able to knock that out pretty quick. Fuel lines, filter, pumps, wire fuel pumps, that should all be like one day of work. And then very critical, guys, engine dipstick. I put it in all caps. See that? All caps. Engine dipstick. Two different builds I forgot to put the engine dipstick in, and the first drive was miserable. So <laughs> don't forget to do that. I did it on this truck once, and I did it on the 350Z, uh, the first drive. And it sucked because you get everything installed and everything's nice and clean. I think on this one, I just got done taking care of like oil leaks and a couple other things and cleaned everything up decent and went to go take it for a first drive. And I forgot the engine dipstick and it just loaded the whole thing back up with oil. So I was so pissed about that. But that's why I put it on there, all caps, and uh, I can't forget about it now. So it's obviously it's something that I, I do. I also forget to tighten stuff. There's always like something that I forget to tighten that's like semi-critical that I, that I mess up. So we'll see what that ends up being this time.